Howdy, partners. Welcome to Cowboy Classics with Scott Paladin. This episode, The Sphinx. In a dim corner of my room for longer than my fancy thinks, a beautiful and silent sphinx has watched me through the shift and gloom. Inviolate and immobile, she does not rise, she does not stir, for silver moons are not to her, and not to her the suns are real. Red follows gray across the air, the waves of moonlight ebb and flow. But with the dawn she does not go, and in the nighttime she is there. Dawn follows dawn, and nights grow old, and all the while this curious cat lies couching on the Chinese mat with eyes of satin rimmed with gold. Upon the mat she lies and leers, and on the tawny throat of her flutters the soft and silky fur, or ripples to her pointed ears. Come forth, my lovely seneschal, so somnolent, so statuesque. Come forth, you exquisite grotesque, half woman and half animal. Come forth, my lovely languorous sphinx, and put your head upon my knee, and let me stroke your throat and see your body spotted like a lynx. And let me touch those curving claws of yellow ivory and grasp the tail that like a monstrous asp coils round your heavy velvet paws. A thousand weary centuries are thine, while I have hardly seen some twenty summers cast their dream for autumn's gaudy liveries. But you can read the hieroglyphs on the great sandstone obelisks, and you have talked with basilisks, and you have looked on hippogriffs. Oh, tell me. Were you standing by when Isis to Osiris knelt? And did you watch the Egyptian melt her union for Antony? And drink the jewel-drunken wine and bend her head in mimic awe to see the huge proconsul draw the salted tunny from the brine? And did you mark the Cyprian kiss the white add-on on his catafalque? And did you follow Amanalk, the god of Heliopolis? And did you talk with Thoth? And did you hear the moon-horned Io weep? and know the painted kings who slept beneath the wedge-shaped pyramid. Lift up your large black satin eyes, which are like cushions where one sinks. Fawn at my feet, fantastic sphinx, and sing me all your memories. Sing to me of the Jewish maid who wandered with the holy child, and how you led them through the wild, and how they slept beneath your shade. Sing to me of that odorous green eve when crouching by the marge you heard from Adrian's gilded barge the laughter of Antinous. And lap the stream and fed your drought and watch with hot and hungry stare the ivory body of that rare young slave with his pomegranate mouth. Sing to me of the labyrinth in which the twiform bull was stalled. Sing to me of the night you crawled against the temple's granite plinth when through the purple corridors the screaming scarlet abbess flew in terror and a horrid dew dripped from the moaning mandragores. And the great torpid crocodile within the tank shed slime of tears and tear the jewels from his ears and staggered back into the Nile. And the priests cursed you with shrill psalms as in your claws you seized their snake and crept away with it to slake your passion by the shuddering palms. Who were your lovers? Who were they who wrestled for you in the dust? Which was the vessel of your lust? What layman had you every day? Did giant lizards come and crouch before you on the reedy banks? Did griffins with great metal flanks leap on you in your trampled couch? Did monstrous hippopotami come sidling towards you in the mist? Did gilt-scaled dragons writhe and twist with passion as you pass them by? And from the brick-built Lycian tomb, what horrible chimera came with fearful heads and fearful flame to breed new wonders from your womb? Or had you shameful secret quests? And did you harry to your home some nereid coiled in amber foam with curious rock-crystal breasts? Or did you, treading through the froth, call to the brown Sidonian for tidings of Leviathan, Leviathan, or Behemoth? Or did you, when the sun was set, climb up the cactus-covered slope to meet your swarthy Ethiop, whose body was of polished jet? Or did you, while the earthen skiffs dropped down the gray nilotic flats, at twilight and the flickering bats flew round the temple's triple glyphs, steal into the border of the bar and swim across the silent lake and slink into the vault and make the pyramid your lupinar, till from each black sarcophagus rose up the painted swathed dead, 
Or did you lure into your bed the ivory horn Tregelophos? Or did you love the god of flies who plagued the Hebrews and was splashed with wine into the waist? Or Pasht who had green barrels for her eyes? Or that young god, the Tyrian, who was more amorous than the dove of Astaroth? Or did you love the god of the Assyrian, whose wings, like strange transparent talc, rose high above his hawk-faced head, painted with silver and with red and ribbed with rods of orichalc? Or did the huge apis from his car leap down and lay before your feet big blossoms of the honey-sweet and honey-colored nenuphar? How subtle secret is your smile. Did you love none then? Nay, I know great Ammon was your bedfellow. He lay with you beside the Nile. The river horses in the slime trumpeted when they saw him come odorous with Assyrian galbanum and smeared with spikenard and with thyme. He came along the river bank like some tall galley argent sailed. He strode across the waters, mailed in beauty, and the waters sank. He strode across the desert sand. He reached the valley where you lay. He waited till the dawn of day, then touched your black breasts with his hand. You kissed his mouth with mouths of flame. You made the horned god your own. You stood behind him on his throne. You called him by his secret name. You whispered monstrous oracles into the caverns of his ears. With blood of goats and blood of steers, you taught him monstrous miracles. Why, Ammon was your bedfellow. Your chamber was the steaming Nile, and with your curved, archaic smile, you watched his passion come and go. With Syrian oils, his brows were bright and widespread as a tent at noon. His marble limbs made pale the moon and lent the day a larger light. His long hair was nine cubits span, and colored like that yellow gem which, hidden in their garments him, the merchants bring from Kurdistan. His face was as the must that lies upon a vat of new-made wine. The seas could not ensephirine the perfect azure of his eyes. His thick, soft throat was white as milk and threaded with thin veins of blue, and curious pearls like frozen dew were broidered on his flowering silk. On pearl and porphyry pedestal he was too bright to look upon, for on his ivory breast there shone the wondrous ocean emerald, that mystic moonlit jewel that some diver of the Colchin Caves had found beneath the blackened waves and carried to the Colchin Witch. Before his gilded galliot ran naked vine-wreathed corbents, and lines of swaying elephants knelt down to draw his chariot, and lines of swarthy Nubians bear up his litter as he rode, down the great granite paven road between the nodding peacock vans. The merchants brought him steatite from Sidon in their painted ships. The meanest cup that touched his lips was fashioned from a chrysolite. The merchants brought him cedar chests of rich apparel bound with cords, His train was borne by Memphian lords. Young kings were glad to be his guest. Ten hundred shaven priests did bow to Ammon's altar day and night. Ten hundred lamps did wave their light through Ammon's carved house. And now, foul snake and speckled adder with their young ones crawl from stone to stone. For ruined is the house, and prone the great rose-marbled monolith. Wild ass or trotting jackal comes and couches in the moldering gates. Wild satyrs call unto their mates across the fallen fluted drums. And on the summit of the pile, the blue-faced ape of Horus sits and gibbers while the fig tree splits the pillars of the peristyle. The god is scattered here and there. Deep hidden in the windy sand, I saw his giant granite hand still clenched in impotent despair. And many a wandering caravan of stately negroes silken shawled Crossing the desert halts appalled before the neck that none can span. And many a bearded Bedouin draws back his yellow striped burnus to gaze upon the tightened thews of him that was thy paladin. Go seek his fragments on the moor and wash them in the evening dew, and from their pieces make anew thy mutilated paramour. Go seek them where they lie alone, and from their broken pieces make thy bruised bedfellow and wake mad passions in the senseless stone. Charm his dull ear with Syrian hymns. He loved your body. Oh, be kind. Pour spikenard on his hair, and wind soft rolls of linen round his limbs. 
wind round his head the figured coins, stain with red fruits those pallid lips, weave purple for his shrunken hips and purple for his barren loins. Away to Egypt, have no fear. Only one god has ever died. Only one god has let his side be wounded by a soldier's spear. But these, thy lovers, are not dead. Still by the hundred cubit gate, dog-faced Anubis sits in state with lotus lilies for thy head. Still from his chair of porphyry, gaunt Memnon strains his lidless eyes across the empty land and cries each yellow morning unto thee. Anilus with his broken horn lies in his black and oozy bed. Until thy coming will not spread his waters on the withered corn. Your lovers are not dead, I know. They will rise up and hear your voice, and clash their cymbals and rejoice and run to kiss your mouth. And so, set wings upon your argosies, set horses to your ebon car, back to the Nile. Or, if you are grown sick of dead divinities, follow some roving lion's spoor across the copper-colored plain. Reach out and hail him by the mane, and bid him be your paramour. Couch by his side upon the grass, and sit your white teeth in his throat. And when you hear his dying note, lash your long flanks of polished brass. And take a tiger for your mate, whose amber sides are flecked with black. And ride upon his gilded back, and triumph through the Theban gate. And toy with him in amorous jests. And when he turns and snarls and gnaws, oh, smite him with your jasper claws, and bruise him with your agate breasts. Are you Tarion? Get hence. I weary of your sullen ways, I weary of your steadfast gaze, your somnolent magnificence. Your horrible and heavy breath makes the light flicker in the lamp, and on my brow I feel the damp and dreadful dews of night and death. Your eyes are like fantastic moons that shiver on some stagnant lake. Your tongue is like a scarlet snake that dances to fantastic tunes. Your pulse makes poisonous melodies, and your black throat is like the hole left by some torch or burning coal on Saracenic tapestries. Away, the sulfur-colored stars are hurrying through the western gate. Away, or it may be too late to climb their silent silver cars. See, the dawn shivers round the gray gilt-dialed towers, and the rain streams down each diamond pane and blurs with the tears the wanish day. What snake-trust fury fresh from hell with uncouth gestures and unclean stole from the poppy-drowsed queen and led you to a student's cell? What songless, tongueless ghost of sin crept through the curtains of the night and saw my taper burning bright and knocked and bade you enter? Are there not others more accursed, wider with leprosies than I? Are Abanon par far dry that you come here to slake your thirst? Get hence, you loathsome mystery, hideous animal, get hence. You wake in me some bestial sense. You make me what I would not be. You make my creed a barren sham. You wake foul dreams of sensual life. And Addis with his blood-stained knife were better than the thing I am. False Sphinx. False Sphinx. By reedy sticks old Charon, leaning on his oar, waits for my coin. Go thou before, and leave me to my crucifix, whose pallid burden, sick with pain, watches the world with weary eyes, and weeps for every soul that dies, and weeps for every soul in vain. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Cowboy Classics with Scott Paladin. Our work tonight was The Sphinx by Oscar Wilde. Produced, edited, and read by Scott Paladin. Audio copyright 2021, Scott Paladin.